This UCSD TV program is a presentation of University of California Television for educational and non commercial use only. Introduction, please. <laughs> What is Faust about? There's a big question. Faust, for me, is a hugely romantic story. Uh, it's, 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 it's kind of a love story. It's about being um, uh, content with where you are and who you are, um, and not always looking for something, something more. It's, again, a big uh, existential exercise, I suppose, in, in philosophy and in life, which I, I love that about opera. I can't answer that question. I mean, I, I mean, can I come back to it? Faust is considered a masterpiece of the French literature and certainly of the period in which it premiered. To my mind, because it embodies so much of what is quintessentially French, something moderate and very, very subtle, very, very tasteful, very, very classy. Now, lest you think that translates to boring, <laughs> you are very wrong. Most verismo, but it's not really. Um, the subject matter has a tendency to be less about weighty matters and more about personal relationships and love, and and so as a result, it gets uh, kind of a bad rap as being frivolous and light. There's a lot that psychologically goes on with these characters, and especially taking it from a a 21st century point of view, bringing all of our experience. Maybe we have a different experience about what's happening to these people than when it was originally written, uh, which just in a way makes it all the more interesting, I think. The pieces are, are more interesting from our points of view. <laughs> Now, there's a lot of exterior things that make French opera French opera. There's usually a big ballet, which of course we most every company cuts in this country because they don't have resident ballet companies that they're trying to employ. It's very, very grand in scope. This is a huge, huge production, big, huge, monumental kind of physical set. Um, the forces are always big, big choruses, and uh, so uh, there are certain exterior things that uh, that you might say make it a French opera but in, in, in this particular case I think that it has a lot to do with uh, the kinds of stories it tells. In Germany the opera is actually called Marguerite and here it's called Faust. I think that's also to do with the fact of not treading on the toes of Goethe so much but it always makes me interested in that there's two ways you can look at this opera whether it's from the point of view of Faust who of course is central in the terms of um, making his pact with the devil which is what causes everything to happen but of course who it happens to is Marguerite really so it's interesting to, to you know look at it from that point of view as well She falls in love with Faust, has his baby, he doesn't return, her brother returns from war, 
the brother faces Faust, is killed by Faust, and her brother curses her. Also, she begs forgiveness for her, you know, impurity in church, and also begs for Faust to return, upon which she thinks the priest also condemns her. So, in a very short period of time, she's a condemned woman and uh, loses her mind, kills her baby, and by the end, she's in a prison. So, oh, it's a tough role. We have a big job to do to portray these characters in the moment and let the audience enjoy their personal struggles and not necessarily think of one character being totally right or even the devil being totally wrong. Uh, although, of course, being the devil, that's his character, of course, is always wrong. <laughs> but, um, but it's more about uh, going through the, through the event and just following the storylines and coming away with not just judgment, but um, a new understanding, a new, you know, stimulating your own thoughts about life, what it means. Is it better to know something as in, you know, cognitively to know or to know by experiencing it? <laughs> The character of Faust is, is an interesting character. Um, he starts off in the beginning of the opera as an old man, and he's kind of realized that his, you know, all of his studying, all of his, you know, throughout his entire life, he's just become this, this lonely old man, and there's nothing left for him but death. So, you know, so he prays to God for help, because for, he's about to kill himself, he wants to end his life. So he prays to God, and, and, and he doesn't obviously get the response that he wants, or get help from God. So he calls upon the devil, and the devil answers his prayers and says, what can I do for you? And he says, well, he said, do you want riches? Do you want fame? He goes, no, 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 I don't want any of that. I want, I want to be young again. I want energy. I want, and, he said, and so the devil makes a deal with him and says, if you want to be young again, he said, you can have everything you want. Just sign this contract with me on earth. I'm your servant. You owe me nothing. But in hell... You're my servant. And, um, and Faust accepts it. And I think it's really just because he's lost. He has nothing left. And he's, he's just, you know, it's, it's his last chance to, to be young again, to go back and do, to, to be in love, to do the things that he, couldn't, he wasn't, didn't do when he was younger. You can hear when, when Faust is an old man, he's singing on stage by himself in the prologue. You can kind of hear the um, agony and the, and the, the feet it is in his music and in his voice. And then 
you can also hear the devil. Like, the devil's this easy, evil character. But, I mean, every once in a while you hear this dark color into his music, but you also hear like a joyful color in it too. And that's this the devil enticing all the characters to do what he wants and to, and to, to manipulate everybody. <laughs> People's idea of what the devil is and what evil is changes all the time. And so uh, that gives me an ever-changing landscape of, of, of choices. So um, with that said, I mean, in, in its essence, it is the devil. And um, basically the moral of the story is, careful, you might get what you wish for. Um, uh, and, and I am the agent of that change. Um, and in, in some, uh, some versions that I've done, I'm, I'm a, I'm, I am the embodiment of what these people think the devil is, and, uh, which is sort of an interesting way to, to look at it. It's a very post-Freud, uh, post post-Jung way of looking at what we conceive evil is. <laughs> The comic elements of, of the story are, are written into the, into the opera itself. I think there's a, there in, in lots of it, there, through the humor that the, the devil expresses, Mephistopheles expresses, that you see, um, you see his disdain for these, these weak and, and, uh, and uh, predictable human beings. <laughs> There's also this interesting question of how serious it is. Of course, it's a very serious subject, you know, making a pact with the devil, the way people's lives are impacted, um, what happens to Marguerite. But the character of Mephistopheles has some quite comic moments in this, which for me helps. I think it helps to keep it sort of light. And of course, my character lightens the whole thing up as well. That's often my role is to be the light relief. Bell is a young man, um, or an old boy, depending on how you look at it. He's maybe 14, maybe 15. He's too young to go to war, and that's the defining thing about him in terms of his age in this show. A lot of the men in the show are soldiers, so they're going off to war, and he can't. So he's envious of the soldiers, but also it gives him the advantage of being able to stay at home and look after Marguerite.
other thing I think that is wonderful about Faust is the huge place of the chorus. The chorus has wonderfully singable music, which choruses love to sing and audiences love to hear. And Faust uh, itself is not considered a choral opera, but when you hear it, you will hear many, many choruses off stage, on stage, soldiers marching on, soldiers marching off, crowd scenes. So the place of the chorus is very important. And, and in studying or restudying a bit the score, I found that uh, in England at the time, uh, Guno entertained much more of a, of a sense of, of fame for his choral works rather than his operas. I found that very interesting and not, not uh, surprising given what we hear in Faust. The entire second scene, there's barely a moment where the chorus isn't on stage. And I wanted a great amount of detail in the, in the work in that scene. Uh, I didn't want to just sort of bring them on and have them sing and, you know, there's just a lot of individual action and a lot of stuff that has to, has to go on amongst them. <laughs> So it actually took me three nights of staging to stage that scene. We inched our way through it and put in lots and lots and lots of detail. The course here is quite spectacular and they take that kind of attention and just soak it in and make it their own and go even further with it. And they love the fact that they feel like that they're not just, you know, a vocal part of it, but they are, you know, an integral part in the drama as well. The physical demands of a, of a piece like Faust can be, can be varied depending on the kind of cast you have. Uh, in this case, I've, I know all these people and I, 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 they're all old friends and I've known, I, so I knew before I came here the kind of, product of, of performances I could get. They're all rather young and, and athletic in their own way. So there wasn't going to be anything that was going to be too much of a challenge for them. And so we never even talked about it. We just talked about what the needs of the scenes were and uh, just went there. Now, when we get onto the actual physical set, it creates some limitations. Like in the final scene, there's this gigantic stairway that leads up to the heavens, perhaps. And uh, it's built in a very strange way in that the steps are very skinny and they're not uniform. So, and they're very high. So the first time we were on the set, it was anybody who had to navigate those steps was concerned, <laughs> and rightly so. So we did some minor adjustments when we got onto the set as far as uh, uh, how long people might stay on the stairs and how many times they went up and down them and that sort of thing. There's a lot of steps in this production that, that the audience is not even necessarily aware of. The physicalities in, in the role can sometimes uh, be challenging, just as challenging as the singing. Uh, or, and in some cases even more so, because there are, there are uh, optimum uh, 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 states with which you can sing, and then there are states with which you are singing despite having to do the staging. Um, uh, and that's not saying that the staging is ridiculous, it's just that, um, uh, for instance, running up a, a, you know, several flights of steps and having not very much time to recover and then having to come out and sing something very very uh, uh, legato, it's a challenge. And, and that's where uh, the craft of bel canto comes in and learning how to sing. And uh, those challenges 
uh, I, I love, actually, because um, I love being physical. I love, I love being active in a piece. And, uh, and especially with this production um, and with what uh, David has us do, I, I, I'm very happy with all of that. Maybe the first day of the physicality of the action on stage is makes it a little difficult to sing. But you know, it's it's like it's almost like anything else. When you go to the gym, that first that first day is always the hardest day. You know, you have to you're lifting you know the lowest weight possible and getting and building up the strength in your arms or your legs or whatever part of your body you're, you're, you're working out that day. And I, I kind of think it's the same way with singing. Um, the more and more you do the action, the more rehearsal you have, and the more you sing as you're doing that action. It, um, it really helps to get it into the voice and get it into your body. And you know, we always joke about, um, you know, you sing a line, you, when you rehearse something, when you're coaching something, you're usually standing in one spot and you're singing it. And then as you're doing it in the opera, you're either on your knees, you're on your this and that, and then you're just like, oh, wow. And then when you try to stand up and sing it again, it's harder because you're usually on your knees at that point. And you're almost using the same muscles, but you're also using more reserve muscles from other places. Yeah, exactly, that's much better. That's much, 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 much better. Perfect. And then Greer, you've got a, a hand more available to go and toss him down. Now try to go, Stephen, this is the trap for the second act, so try to just kind of end up about right here, if you mm. can. Okay. So that's fine, right? That's fine, okay. Right, and I see just that. So that little yeah. foothold works for you? That could work. That could work. There is always that moment when the director says, right, and now you're just gonna jump up onto that wall and jump off the wall and you go, yeah. And you're thinking, okay, I hope. <laughs> the thing to do is to say yes first and then figure out whether you can actually do it because you've got to at least try. That way is fine. Yeah, because you just sit just and go back. No, no, I'll just jump. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Oh, just jump. But this yeah. year I don't get to fight with swords, which is a real shame. And I said to the director on the first day, so I, I see there's some sword fighting, so I'm going to be sword fighting. And he went, no, 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 you're the, you're the lover, not the soldier. And I went, yeah, 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 but I'm going to be sword fighting, right? I'm definitely going to sword fight. And he thought I was joking, but unfortunately, no, I don't get to fight. If one is hearing Faust for the first time, let go of any boundaries of expectation. And I don't mean because anything's going to be so alarmingly different on stage, but be totally open to where this music, particularly this music, and its characters will take you. I think that the music is extremely seductive. In French we say, c'est très attirant. It attracts you, it pulls you to the story. The story unfolds in a way that is made much more believable by what you're hearing these characters sing and do. Um, and there is such gorgeous melody and such expert and sophisticated orchestration. would be great for an audience member to come in a theater with is an expectation of an experience, a, a, a big theatrical experience. In this opera, there's a lot of magic, I guess, to behold, as well as gorgeous melodies.
54. And one.